What's happening, Saints fans? In today's video, I'm going to go through a handful of Dennis Allen replacements. Last week, we discussed this as a topic, but I wanted to get into some more options in today's video. Give you like 10, 11 different names to keep an eye out for that I think could be a really good fit for the New Orleans Saints. But there are going to be a handful of openings for head coaches, I believe. And to be honest, I don't think that the New Orleans Saints are the most desirable situation considering the roster, considering the caps, uh, the amount of cap space that they have or that the lack thereof, I should say. Um, they're in the process of a rebuild. I'm just not necessarily sure how many coaches are going to want to come to New Orleans. But here's a handful of, uh, of teams that I think could have a new head coach upcoming. Uh, obviously, the Jets already moved on from Robert Salah. The Saints obviously moved on from Dennis Allen. But Brian Dable, Mike McCarthy, Matt Eberflus, Doug Peterson, Antonio Pierce, uh, Kevin Stefanski. And honestly, I know that the Patriots, they had, had it written in stone that Gerard Mayo was going to be the, the, the head coach after Belichick, no matter what. Maybe the Patriots are like, ah, that was a bad idea. Let's, maybe he's not ready. Let's, let's keep this thing moving. So if you guys are excited about the new era of Saints football, the boogeyman is gone. He cannot hurt you anymore. Hit the thumbs up icon and like today's video because I want to start off this new era with some good mojo. I know this has been a tough season. I know it's been hard. But if you like today's video, not only are you going to feel a lot better, I guarantee you we're all going to feel a lot better. So if you're part of the fun, if you want to be a part of the new era and have a good start, hit the thumbs up icon like today's video. Now, the first replacement to discuss is obviously the interim head coach, Darren Rizzi. He has been named the interim head coach since Dennis Allen has been fired. He has a really, really strong mentality. He's been scrappy ever since he started his coaching career. Started off in some low-level college coaching, moved up to some higher-level college coaching, and then moved up into the NFL. Was in, has, has been climbing the rankings all throughout his career. And I can tell you right now, he's very, very, very passionate about football. I actually saw a post on social media that was like, man, dare I say I get a little Dan Campbell vibes, and I'm not going to go that far. But I will say this, he gets you fired up. He makes you want to run through a wall, and he just looks like a football guy. So I think Darren Rizzi is an excellent option. I think that he's a really good fit for New Orleans right now. And moving forward, depending on how things go, if he wins a lot of football games, you know, maybe it's a good option. But I don't want this to be the case. I don't want us to do what the Raiders did. I don't want us to just pick the guy who can yell hoot at the loudest. No. We got to pick a good fit, somebody who can stable the ship, somebody who can take this franchise by the reins and take it into the right direction. So for another option for us to discuss is Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. Really quick thing that I want to add here, it takes two to tango. So the Saints can want Ben Johnson all they want. That doesn't mean Ben Johnson wants to come to the Saints. But I do think that he is the clear-cut number one head coaching candidate for the 2025 coaching class. He has been the offensive coordinator for Detroit from or since 2022 until present day. I mean, he has had one of the top producing offenses ever since he started taking over play calling duties for the Lions. He's smart. He's young. He's innovative. He's creative. And I think he is a really, really good coach and a good leader that could really do some special things for the New Orleans Saints. But again, it just it's going to take two to tango, and I don't think that he's going to want to deal with the New Orleans Saints nonsense. Now, Mike Vrabel is another coach that I've started to warm up to the more I've thought about it. I'm kind of in the camp of, look, I don't want to have a defensive-minded head coach, but I will say this, Mike Vrabel, if there's anybody who can stable a ship, if there's anybody who can just take grasp of a football team and build a culture and be a, 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 a strong like leader and a strong presence in a locker room, it's Mike Vrabel without question. He's currently a coaching and personnel consultant for the Browns, so he's still active in the NFL coaching circle right now and across the NFL. He was the Titans head coach from 2018 to 2023. He was the head co uh, he was AP coach of the year in that time span. And on top of that, like I mentioned, he's a defensive-minded head coach, but I think that he is a guy who can really build a culture. He did it already once with the Titans where he helped steady the ship. Things kind of started going downhill again, but I honestly think that Mike Vrabel is a good football coach, and I think that he'd be an excellent fit for the New Orleans Saints. Now, I will give you a friendly reminder. There will be a lot of updates and a lot of news coming in around the black and gold as we continue to go throughout this season and as the offseason gets here sooner than you know. And we're also less than 250 subscribers away from 38,000, which is our next milestone. So if those are two good enough reasons, 
I don't know what to tell you. Hit the sub button, lock us in for daily Saints videos, multiple live shows a week, and of course, to help us reach that next milestone. All right, Joe Brady is another coach that I think that the New Orleans Saints could benefit from bringing in. I really like what he's done with the Buffalo Bills in terms of how their offense looks, and I think when it comes to the Saints, they could use somebody like Joe Brady. This year for Buffalo, the offense has been very, very productive. They're top five in points per game. They're about all average in yards per game, but, I mean, when you're starting at the 50-yard line and putting up a lot of points, you're not going to have a lot of yards. They are top 10 in yards per play. They're effective on fourth down. They're actually the most effective team on fourth down. Could be better on third down. Um, but they also score a lot of touchdowns, like I mentioned. That's why they have a lot of points. They're number three in that metric. The quarterback has only been sacked at a rate of 3.9%. That is the number one in the league. And the new and, and when it comes to Joe Brady specifically, I think that's a really nice thing to consider, especially with the New Orleans Saints offensive line playing like it is. They are injured. They are hurt. That is obviously an issue. But moving forward, if you can minimize the sacks, that is a huge win for an offense. Now, Bobby Slowick is another name to keep an eye out on. He's going to be a popular one for sure. And, and Bobby Slowick has been doing really good things for the Houston Texans ever since he took over under D'Amico Ryans down in Houston. And when it comes to his past, he comes from the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. He was with the 49ers from 2017 up until 2022. And he's done a phenomenal job with C.J. Stroud. Like, without question, in that draft class, C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback without fail. And I think part of it is, one, the raw talent. And, two, I think some of it is also just the – what he's been able to do in terms of catering to his skill set, building an offense around him, and scheming up success for Stroud and for the uh, Texans offense. I like Bobby Sloak as an option a lot, and I do think that he is a name that could be in a reasonable option. It could be a realistic one, but again, I think he's going to be a hot, a hot name, and I think he's going to be a very hot commodity. Dare I say hot take, a really hot take here, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, Bobby Sloak might do the Ben Johnson thing and just be like, look, I got a good situation here. I'm going to wait till I get a a, a, a job that I really, really like. All right, we got a lot more names to go through. We got a lot more to discuss in terms of Dennis Allen replacements. So just stand by while I tell you guys about prize picks. If you guys want to make some money while you watch the New Orleans Saints, LSU, Tulane, the Pelicans, or any other sporting event, whether it's esports, I mean, everything in between, they got, they got everything on here. I'm telling you, prize picks is the place to do it. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, PrizePix makes your game viewing experience so much better. And if you use our code CLNS when you download the PrizePix app, you get $50 instantly when you play 5 bucks. PrizePix also has weekly promotions that can lead to big-time payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, PrizePix discounts selected player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Now, here are the selections I'm rolling with for this week. It's Falcons week, so I think Taysom Hill scoring a touchdown is an absolute lock. Last time they played, he scored twice. Alvin Kamara, fun fact, only needs 12 more rushing yards to be the all-time leader ahead of Mark Ingram in franchise rushing yards for the New Orleans Saints. So that would be a pretty cool met er, number to see him hit. But I want to see him get more than that. Let's go get 72 yards so I can make some money, AK. And then Jalen Hurts. I think he's going to have at least one passing touchdown. That is an easy selection for me against the Dallas Cowboys. They're a bad football team, and they are in a collapse as well. So, guys, if you want to fade my picks, you want to tell my picks, I don't care. Just download the Price Picks app so you can make some picks. Make sure you use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play 5 bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks, run your game. All right, so this is another really like, I don't know if I love this idea. I like Cliff Kingsbury. Like, when I first initially talked about it, I was like, I really think Cliff Kingsbury would be good. But then I was like, ah, kind of remembered, like, things were not necessarily amazing in Arizona. And then I remembered, like, he was going to be the Raiders OC, and then, like, he wasn't, and then he left. And so, you know, I, I, that, that whole situation was weird. But I will say this, when it comes to Cliff Kingsbury, he has done absolute wonders with Jaden Daniels. And I think when it comes to the New Orleans Saints, if they're a team that's in the market for a new quarterback, whether it's a Shador Sanders, whether it's a Cam Ward, or if you want to just invest and try and build around Hayner or Rattler, 
He's done it already with Jaden Daniels. Maybe he can do something with one of those guys. So if you want a quarterback whisperer, maybe Cliff Kingsbury could be a good option because he's already done it well with Jaden Daniels. I'm not saying he's been perfect over the course of his career, but I'll, he's been impressive in the most recent situation we've seen him in. Now I want to ask you this question. Which kind of coach do you want? I'm leaning offensive, but like I can also I can also like understand a defensive coach. Like if it's a if it's Rabel, like I'm not gonna be upset about it, but like I would prefer an offensive coach. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And I know that this is gonna be a name that fires up a lot of people, whether it's positive or negative. Get down in the comments. What do you think? Let me know. What do you think about Dion? What about Prime being the head coach for the New Orleans Saints? Well, for me personally, it's one of those things where I think that Deion Sanders, he is a good football coach. He won at Jacksonville State, or Jackson State, excuse me. He is winning this year for Colorado. But I think that he's more of a college football coach because I think the big appeal for him is I know what can get you to the league. I know what can get you to the next step. I can recruit and bring in all these young, talented, what he calls dogs, and you can bring in a lot of young, good football players. But I would honestly, right now in the current situation that New Orleans Saints are in with a rebuild going on, I would rather somebody with more experience as a coach. I'd rather bring in somebody that, you know, like I think he could be a good recruiter for free agents and coaches and stuff, but like I'm also in the camp of like I just think that there is safer and more trust – not not trustworthy, that's not the right word. I think there's just safer options. And – to be honest, like, does he want to go to the NFL? That's the other thing. Like, would he want to go to the NFL? Like I said for Ben Johnson, it takes two to tango. I think Deion Sanders is a fine college football coach. Not really willing to risk the future of my rebuild and push my rebuild off just to try out something with Deion. Like, if, if I'm wrong and things happen, he's an NFL coach and he's the best damn coach ever, I'll be the first one to admit it. But I would right now in this situation for the New Orleans Saints as they currently stand, I would rather somebody with a little bit more coaching experience. All right, very controversial name back-to-back, -back, Deion Sanders and then John Gruden. I know a lot of you guys are going to have very specific opinions about John Gruden. And I know a lot of y'all are going to have very specific opinions about me when I say that I think John Gruden could be a decent idea. Is he the best option? No. But I do think that he can maximize Derek Carr if he is the – which I think he is. It's pretty – unless they decide out of nowhere they're just going to – eat all the money and cut him and whatever. Right now, as it stands, Derek Carr is in the plan for the future, at least next season as well. He brought the best season out of Derek Carr as a Raider. If somebody wants to be a bridge and somebody can help get us to the next quarterback and be an offensive mind, and like you cannot question that John Gruden is a very smart football mind. I don't want to talk about his personal life. I don't want to talk about how he is as a human being. I think that Certain things get blown out of proportion because social media and, and, and all these things exist. But I will say this. He is a big distraction. There are a lot of things that are going to come with that. Don't know if that's what I would want my football team to necessarily have. Similar to Deion Sanders, I'm going to keep it both ways. If I don't want it for one coach, I'm going to want it for another coach. I don't want the distraction. I don't want the nonsense that comes with it. But there's no question about it. Smart football mind. Similar to Dion, no question about it. Smart football mind, great recruiter. Just I don't know if he's an NFL head coach. So just, you know, wanted to get the two controversial ones out of the way at least. And I wouldn't say controversial, just like very hot takey. The, the opinions on both of these coaches are very, very extreme, whether one way or the other. All right, let's talk about Aaron Glenn moving forward. Uh, he does have ties to the New Orleans Saints because he was with the uh, black and gold as a player back in 2008, and he also served as a defensive backs coach from 2016 out until 2020. Moved over to the Detroit Lions with Dan Campbell, uh, where he also was a coach here in New Orleans. Gosh, I know it would have never happened, but wouldn't have happened fun to have Dan Campbell be the head coach. Damn it, man. Anyway, um, the Lions, without question, are one of the top defenses in the league. Just like the offense, they're also one of the top defenses in the league. And Aaron Glenn is a big reason for that. And despite losing Aiden Hutchinson and despite some of these players going out to injuries, they have still been very productive. And Aaron Glenn is – I think that he could be a good coach. He's already interviewed for multiple head coaching jobs over the last few off seasons, so he is already gaining head coaching interest. So there is the obvious tie. Do I want to keep the, like, 
the ties to New Orleans trend going. I mean, maybe I would make an exception because I wouldn't even necessarily be like, I think he has more ties to Detroit as a – like, I think Detroit was more important to his long-term success than being in New Orleans, as controversial as that might sound. Like, I don't think he's like a Saints guy. I think he's a Lions guy that Saints could bring in that also just you – know. anyway, I'm getting off track. Long story short, Aaron Glenn I think could be a good option, but again, I'm leaning more offensively. <laughs> I know I just said that, but Bill Belichick, just really quick take on him. I think it could be a – Decent idea in terms of being a football coach. I'm just also not really interested in having a guy who wants total control right now. Dare I say maybe it could work. Maybe it actually is something that could be good because Mickey Loomis isn't necessarily being the best GM in the whole wide world, in my opinion. But I, yeah, I'm, I think he's old. I think I, like my whole thing is I want young, fresh, offensive, new, innovative minds. That is not him. So I'm just going to say no. I just wanted to mention him because I know a lot of y'all are going to be asking about him. Now, Todd Munkin, another name to keep an eye out on. Um, the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Their offense is great. If you go get an athletic quarterback like a Cam Ward or like a Shador, maybe it makes sense to get – or no, not, not draft and then hire Todd Munkin. But Todd Munkin could be a good pairing for one of those two if you draft one of them considering the success he's had with Lamar this season. So, you know, just a handful of names that I wanted to throw your way. 11 total, including Darren Rizzi. So I'll ask you, who should be the next Saints head coach? Get down in the comment section. I gave you 11. Pick one of mine. Pick another name. I don't care. But I want you to get down in the comments and share your thoughts. Y'all stay golden, Houdat Nation. We will see you next time.